Hey guys, my voice is nearly back to normal, thank God. But today we have a finger licking good story. You'll understand whenever you get reading into it, but I'll see you at the end of the video. Be me, lawful evil human college of Whisper Bard. In a world where bards are hated, pretending to be a warlock. Role play him like a lonesome cowboy with a big crossbow on his hip. Big on on his hip. <laughs> <laughs> be not me, Aracocra Druid. Rogue Halfling, Humans, Battle Mage and Cleric. Be also not me. My player in another campaign DM. Be playing at level 3 in the general region of Waterdeep. After an almost total party kill with some random sturges in a random cave. So random. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god, oh god mummy. <laughs> I join the party as one of the other players leaves for a few sessions while investigating the manticores that the party fought the previous session and escaped. We find the new character of a dead PC, the Aracocra Druid. She tells us she is investigating the suspicious activity of the cult in the valley and how the manticores might be related to it. Join forces with her as she tells us that the people of her village might be able to help us out and cooperate with us. On the way, we find a cart being pulled by Knowles and what seems to be screaming coming off of it. The party hesitates to act or not, so I ask the Aracocra if their people have troubles with the Knowles. She says that yes, so I convince the rest to attack, rescue the people and hopefully gain some standing with the birds once we meet them. Fight in shoes. I want that Pokemon fucking music, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Fight in shoes which I get close to the cart to check on the prisoners. Then a fucking gibbering mouth jumps off the cart and attacks me. Fuck this shit I'm out. <laughs> Fuck this shit I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> he blinds everyone else except me, but rolls a critical hit and almost bites my entire health off. Because I'm a college of whispers and have the crossbow feet, I can do a surprising amount of damage even in close quarters, so I also return him a natural 20 just for good measure. Next round, however, while my friends are still busy with the gnolls, he attacks and knocks me unconscious. Cleric healing words me and brings me back up. Cowboy, coy boy? Coy boy? Cowboy will remember that. <laughs> Dot telltale. I slice him up with my rapier and I put a crossbow on his gaping maw and shot a bolt charged with psychic energy, blowing him the fuck up, almost killing it by myself. Roll for lingering injury. Get lucky. Get nothing. Fast forward to arriving on the town built in the side of the cliff. As a fellow DM, I love to ask questions about the lore and customs of the people. For my curiosity slash ignorance about bird culture, I am the plus one on the meeting with the village elders. We kneel in front of them as they begin to talk to the druid about sending her and us on yet another side quest to stop an evil wind cult to fuck with the winds of magic. I should also mention that at no point was I introduced nor even asked my name. They only assumed my compliance. So I get up and try to discuss the situation as equals or partners. After all, we might share similar goals but this isn't a one-sided relationship. Also mentioning our fight with the gnolls and their aberrations and how I almost lost my life but single-handedly slayed the beast. They shut me down while forcing me to kneel again and calling me an inferior being for not having wings. Okay, fuck. Calm you down. Fucking birds. See, this is why I don't like birds in general. Like, fucking pigeon people. Like. You better believe that I will remember that. I reluctantly shut up, and turns out that this secondary quest is near our main quest. What a coincidence. We could kill two birds with one stone. <laughs> <laughs> with only rewards being implied, if not omitted, in their entirety. These bird brains seem to be under the impression that by letting us buy supplies from their shop and sleeping in one of their homes, that that was reason enough to send us on a dangerous mission. Something that in any other civilized society was simply granted by default. Over the course of our brief stay, get told by basically everyone including the ducklings the same shit about flying master race or some shit. And get threatened with definite... Means get fucked out of window. Defenestation. Anyway. <laughs> Defenestration. I don't know why the fuck that I don't know. Was in there. Over the cliff for basically doing anything remotely offensive. Other players don't seem to mind since they are so elegant and beautiful creatures. And little burbs are so cute. <laughs> Burb! I hate that word. Burb. Well, unfortunately for them, my character has an inferiority complex 
and a pragmatic set of morals. And now they are on top of my sh- <laughs> on top of my shit list. KFC nose. No- noise. Noise? Noise. Noise. <laughs> noise. <laughs> Fast forward a few sessions down the line. During this time, even though we butt heads, mostly about race, me and the bird druid grow closer. We bond over the fact that I have a daughter about the same age as her. She's like seven. Ira Crockers grow up really fast, who is currently in the hands of my bitch of an ex-wife. She took kids. She took the kids. <laughs> when my dreams to become a bard blew up in my face, she kicked me while I was down, took her daughter, my house, and half of my meagre savings. We arrive at the evil Sky Temple, even though I tried to stall the party for as long as possible. And I offer to infiltrate to scout out the place and take no for an answer. Take no for an answer? Is that meant to be take... Don't take no for an answer? That's ah, I meant. Meh. I don't know. Use a combination of the sky self, deception, stealth and invisibility to get to their inner sanctum. Then comes one of the riskiest moves I have made in my entire RPG career. I cast the sky self, transforming me in the lawful noble battle mage of her grip and approach the leader of the evil wind cult. I keep going to say evil wind cunt. <laughs> I apologise for the interpretation and argue that if I wasn't willing to do the diplomacy, I wouldn't have made myself known. I ask what it is what they are exactly doing and also tell them about my experience with the Arakokra. How they besmirched my honour, both as a warrior and as a proud human noble. And that although they basically forced me to accept their request, I have no real motivation for doing so. The Supreme Cultist still doesn't trust me. So he casts Zone of Truth, and the DM asks me to roll a wisdom saving throw. I ask him that there's no need, for my intentions are true. Supreme Cultist asks me a series of questions in which I state that I care nothing for the bird persons in that village. The bird druid is not currently in the village, so it is technically true, and that I would very much enjoy seeing their smug feathers suffer. The Discord chat goes wild. (laughs) Supreme Cultist takes a liking to me and proceeds to villain explain his plan, which involves dominating the winds of magic, basically allowing them complete aerial supremacy and denying those cocky nuggets the ability to fly. Fuck them. They fuck them. deserve it. Are they sure this guy's evil? Are they sure? Plot twist. I mean, you get open yourself a nice wee KFC. <laughs> I command his plan and even give him some advice point them towards a flying ranger corps who has issues with the bird person as well and some insider information about the birds, including the fact that their leader, the arch druid, seems to be missing. I also offer to keep any misguided heroes off their asses to give them time to complete the ritual. All I ask in return is that they make sure their pride and spirits are broken. They are elated and reward me with some magic dagger and some gold and sent me on my way. Discord is a cacophony of screams, swear words and memes, just as I like it. I go back out and put on the performance of a lifetime. First I stumble towards the grip, visibly shaken and wordlessly jump to the feathered arms of the druid. Then I start to mumble, while describing a really exaggerated version of the supreme cultist, talking about how he was able to see through my invisibility with no effect, implying tree sight cast powerful magic including a sphere of shredding winds that almost killed me, implying a wind-based fireball-like spell, and how he seemed to fly at the speed of sound. Then I asked the druid to make a wisdom saving throw, as I just used my words of terror on her. She fails and is frightened of the supreme leader for one hour, not being able to take a step closer to the temple. Then I seem to come to tell everyone that we need to run, for the supreme leader is all-powerful, and I don't know for how long I was able to fill him, and that in any case, the temple is now on alert, and we need to get out of there. Later, after running for a while, I turn to the bird druid and say that she doesn't have to worry, as long as she stays close to me, she will be safe. But you have to trust me, okay? She seems reluctant to agree. A bit metagamey from her part, but... Well, look, I'd be doing the same. I'd be like, no, I know what you're up to, Beach. Do you really have to do this? You're <laughs> only a bit rude. Do you like, a bit over the top? Then I ask her again to roll a wisdom saving throw, as I just cast a suggestion on her, and she fails yet again. The dice gods are on the side of justice and retribution tonight. So for the next eight hours, she is compelled to trust me, find a place to lay low and take a short rest. Meanwhile, 
Lawful stupid battle mage starts to mess with me, saying that I was a weakling and a card for running away, and even implying that I had an ulterior motive. Thankfully, DM shuts his metagame down as I played my role flawlessly and have been nothing but friendly and helpful towards the party. Then I simply stay quiet for a while. Then I respond, You didn't see what I saw, Sir Knight, as I tell a similar story as before, and since I had a short rest, use my words of terror again. He fails and shuts the fuck up. The player is fuming over Discord. <laughs> yeah, you can almost <laughs> you can feel it. Feel the salt. <laughs> as I propose that we leave and simply go back to our main quest, Cleric is the only one not fully convinced, as the halfling rogue, both the character and the player, are 100% on my side. But with the druid trusting my judgement, the rogue on my side, and the battle mage scared shitless, the cleric relents and we continue on our main quest. During the rest of the day, I start to plant the seeds of paranoia on our young druid's mind, asking if she did anything to anger the elders, and implying that they sent her there to die, or maybe they are part of a secret cabal that got rid of their master, the archdruid, since he is missing for unknown reasons. Since she is compelled to trust me, I have her eating from the palm of my hand, like the dumb little bird that she is. The fucking worm. Eat the fucking, the fucking dirt! Eat, eat the bread, eat the bread. <laughs> As a side note, me and the druids player are friends IRL, and she loved my performance and was truly entranced by my words, and evil genius, so no hard feelings there. Later on, we received word that the village was destroyed by the evil wind cult, joining forces with the rangers and they were slaughtered as they laid helplessly on the ground. The druid was distraught, but guess in which shoulder she wiped her tears on. <laughs> now this powerful druid only had me as a close confidant, and our relationship evolved from there. Well, I must say, that was excellently performed, yeah. and I'm happy that any metagame was just shut the fuck down, although you can imagine it's very difficult It'd be very not hard to... not to metagame. I would find it really hard. <sighs> I, I, it is. It's something you have to consciously make an effort against him but like if you guys have any stories like this where you know you have to avoid it at all costs maybe something similar to this you should maybe write it down and maybe you could even post it on our di- subreddit fuck i keep saying discord. <laughs> discord i'm so used to saying discord well to much the dismay of our, our discord, discord we have a subreddit and, and we really want to hear your guys stories because we've done a couple of videos now where we do your comments and your some of your comments are really really good and i want to hear more yeah so put more into the subreddit put your stories in and we can do like a subreddit saturday or something uh, yeah something well, like, no, that's garb Blues day saturday fuck our bro <laughs> <laughs> right well anyway look we'll work that shit out I'll links to it down below we've already got a couple stories already in there we're going to be doing them stories soon soon you know we'll do those the few that are in there and then if y'all like put in your own story y'all <laughs> Garbro's in my <laughs> I know he's invaded so he's yeah. my essence well anyway see you in the next video hope you guys enjoyed see you later bye all those moments lost in time <laughs>